our mailbag episode. Pat Pete, Brian McFadden. We got a few questions before we get up out of here. We would love to address and answer. Thank you once again for you guys for just filling in our comment section on Twitter, on YouTube with these outstanding questions in regards to football, our careers, and specifically speaking, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Pat P, you ready? Next question. It's coming Let's from JH86 Guy. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love the knowledge, insight, and the genuineness you bring to your platform. Keep up the great work. My question, what do you wish high school and college football coaches focus on more so or just did differently for cornerbacks coming up in, 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 in young ages? Hashtag, here we go. That's a good question. So, Pat That's P, great, yeah, what do you wish high school question. or college coaches would do differently in regards to coaching young corners coming up? Man, that's crazy you say mm. that, man. Who who was this from again? JH86 guy. I don't know if he's a high school player, a collegiate yeah. player, maybe an adult. I don't, I don't have, know, but it's a good question. Yeah, I don't remember all those letters that you just said, but JH86 guy. Yeah, shout out to him. Um, it's crazy that you asked me that question because I'm just watching this show. Um, you know, my wife's from New Orleans mm -hmm. and she went to car and they have this documentary on Netflix. I can't remember the name of it, but it's going into depth on, it's kind of like it's following this high school throughout the season. Mm -hmm. And they showed it. That's Ed, Ed, Edna Carr? Yes. yes. Went, I didn't know that. Yeah. We got, so we got my, quite a few boys on the team from uh, Florida State from Carr. Yeah, so my wife went to Edna Carr and I'm watching this documentary with her and I'm like, damn, high school's doing this now? Mm -hmm. Like they was in there actually watching film. Yeah, having a game plan. I'm like, man, I remember going and like I never watched no, yeah, exactly. I never watched no my opponent ever in high school. Yeah, that wasn't even thought of then. My I think I only watched watch the, 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 <laughs> the the game from Friday on Saturday. We watched the replay, like what we did wrong. That was it. So we had Saturday exactly. Games. So you watching yeah. you watching us like, well, yeah. but we never watched the in, the opponent. Yeah. So with me, I'm like, damn, like this really have involved into new heights on getting the kids ready for the the uh, the college level, getting the kids ready, getting them prepared for the college level, but also what they can be looking forward to if they are good enough to get in the league. Mm. Like this is what it's going to take. Yeah. Like, you you have to know your opponent if you want to be a step ahead of them. Ain't no if and if and buts uh, 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 around that, especially yeah. with all this technology that's at hand now. No so question. why that's waste different. it? So with me seeing that, I'm like, damn, man, I, that's pretty cool seeing that these high schools, these top tier high schools. I'm sure St. Thomas. I'm sure you know some of the schools Ely, down there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're doing the same thing. Booker yeah. T's the. The Northwest, I'm sure. I'm sure they're doing the same thing because those, those are nationally, national, nationally known team yep. uh, programs. Yep. So with me saying, I'm like, damn, man, college, uh, high school football is really, yeah, it's definitely involved. So with me saying, I was, I was actually really pleased to see that because that's what these kids need, need to be informed of before they get to the next level. That's mm -hmm. what. That's kind of what. School is for, but school don't give us the, the proper tools that we need to be adults, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yep. But what I the like high that. school program is doing, they're doing, they're giving these kids the proper tools that they need to be successful athletes at an early stage because they need to see that now. They yeah. don't, they don't, it, it, it shouldn't be a culture shock at each level that they go to because when you get in college, what they're doing. They showing you how you travel. They showing you how you know how how the team give you gear. They showing you how you study. They showing you how you work out. So when you get to the league, it's the same thing. Just maybe a, a, a notch, you know, ahead of college at some programs. Yeah, you know no what question. I mean. So yeah, I think that's big. You know, with me when I saw that, I was like, man, that's huge, man. Seeing yeah. that they're giving these kids this platform now. So they're not, it's not a culture shock, you know, when they get to the next level. Because the biggest thing to me, we both came from highly talented programs, mm -hmm. uh, even, even communities. Yeah. Oh, in no a question. Sense. Yeah. But I feel like guys didn't have the proper guidance, the proper uh, leadership 
that they needed to see to get them to the next step because there's so many guys, and I can go down a, a freaking list that should be in the same position that I'm in right now. Yeah, no question. It's, it's like that everywhere, though, unfortunately. And yeah. now things, like you said, the times have changed. Things have changed in, in regards to the technology and how things are presented to these kids. And that's why we're seeing so many kids flourish. I think to piggyback off on what you were talking about, just film study. I wish high school coaches for positions would really hone in and helping these kids learn how to watch film the right way in regards to secondary play, corners, safeties, what to look for in certain alignments, in certain uh, formations that can put you in positions to make plays before the ball is ever in play. That's yeah. I didn't learn how to watch film towards the towards my end of my collegiate career. But if I knew how to watch film early in my collegiate career, going back to my high school days, it would have really been a wrap. You know what I mean? Because like you said, for you, you just just utilize your God-given ability and just the competitive nature that you had to be able to be a beast. But just imagine if young Pat P really knew how to watch film. Right. You know what I mean? So I think that would be something that I would emphasize from high school <clears throat> coaches and college coaches as well, because keep it real. Let's keep it real. There are a lot of major programs that are not coaching the right way. Right. A and lot I, of these kids are not getting coached the right way. And that's what I was exactly about to hit on. I didn't want to interrupt you. I wanted you to get finished. That's exactly what I was about to hit on because most of these college programs, they have guys that come from a little league background or, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, no knock on them. That's where they came from. But that's what most of these, at least where and being in Florida, where I came from, that's what mm -hmm. I've seen. A little league background or maybe at the highest level, high school. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think if you if you have an opportunity to put more guys in place, because I told my wife, that's the only level I would be a, a high school uh, a head coach is high school mm -hmm. to be able to give these young, this, the younger generation, the tools that they need to be successful, because I've been there like I've done that. And I want to make sure that they're not making or having the same mistakes or the same mishaps that I felt that I've that I've had that it could have made me better at yeah. my time, especially knowing everything that's at hand right now. I agree. I agree. Thank you, JH86 guy, for that question. Next question. Ha ah, comes from a familiar face. At J Powers 25. Oh no, yes. JP I made the show. No Shout question. out to my boy J Powers. Gerard Powers, man. Not NFL one of my favorite. But yeah, not one of my that is my favorite teammate of oh. all time. I said Carson hey. Palmer. Yeah, I you I did. Said Carson, yeah, I said Carson Palmer. But JP is man. That's a, that's a dear friend to me, man. Because we both we both share a cancer birthday. We don't share the same birthday, but we both are cancers. We both love golf. We both love our families. And that is my guy right there, bro. And well, from day hey. one, Matt. Yeah. From day one, Matt, we hit it off. And that's good. And that's good. And think about the question he sent. Oh, no. What? I, yeah. I, I'm worried, Mac. I'm worried what he said. <laughs> now, you really, you really the got the question that came out, from man. Gerard Powers. Hey, JP, anything J. Can Powers come from JP. Anything can come from JP. Well, this one is best oh, cornerback yes. teammate y'all have had for both of us. So I guess I already know your answer. <laughs> As he said, cornerback teammate. I already know your answer. The best cornerback teammate you've had. There's no other than JP. JP no question. No doubt about it, man. Well, what made him? Like, oh, well, hey, you already just basically said what made him such a great teammate. Because right. you said he's the best teammate. Forget cornerback. So right. he's, he's man, the best. JP, when I say you, if, if we want to go out to the to the freaking, to uh, where we used to go? We used to go to Ocean 44. Mm -hmm. We used to go all type of the bars just to talk about life, talk about our kids. At the time, actually, I didn't have a kid. When yeah. JP was my uh Your was teammate. my teammate. So gotcha. Peyton was she was just born. Because JP came, became my teammate in 14, and I think he left us for the 17 season, if I'm not mistaken. So we was mm -hmm. only teammates for about three two, years. Yeah, three, two, three, three years. years. But the thing I love about JP, man, like he was the same every day, man. Like JP was the same every day. He was gonna keep it real. Mm -hmm. 
And like for me being a cancer, like I read him very well. Like, <laughs> like I knew what he was a, what was about to do even before he did it because, like I said, we both were can we both are cancer. So like yeah. I like all right, yep, I already know what you what you thinking, JP. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to say? You know what I mean? So me and him had just such a uh such a special connection. And Tyron is not a teammate. I know people might say Tyron, that's my brother, yeah, by the way. So he's different. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But JP man, was in Arizona from 2013 to 2015. Yeah, man, man. JP, man. We just, we just have a special bond. We still go on family trips to this day. That's what's you know, up. We still, we still hang out. We still have a uh, family time. We still golf. Um, still cam killer cam, his son, mm -hmm. uh, his oldest son is still my guy. I text him FaceTime me every once in a while, you know, so uh, yeah, that's family, man. But JP, man, I'm telling you, Matt, from day one, we hit it all. Man. So, Max, who, who is your uh, favorite cornerback teammate? Oh, my goodness. My favorite cornerback teammate. I'll probably go with Ike Taylor. Me and Ike played yep. together. Uh, I played with Ike the longest out of most of the other cornerbacks that I played with. And we hit it off instantly as well. And the unique thing about our relationship, you know, Ike was in the league maybe two years before me. And I get drafted mm -hmm. in the second round. So, many people might have thought there wouldn't have been a relationship because I'm coming in as a second round draft pick. I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying to find a way right. to get somebody's spot. And he didn't see it as, as that, you know, he instantly man gravitated to, to me and I, and vice versa and just kind of showed me the ropes. And ever since then, you know, we've, we've been riding heavy together still to this day. And I appreciate that because you know how it is Pat, sometimes in the league yeah, when a man. vet sees you as a threat, <laughs> they don't want to rock with you. Or when they think you're a threat, he never saw me as a threat. He saw me as an individual that can help the defense, can help the team. And I really appreciate that. And this has always been a genuine relationship. And he's the type of guy, man, going to, going to, he's going to go to war for you as well. So mm -hmm. I'll go with Ike Taylor. But JP, man, thank you for that outstanding question as well. Uh, clearly, big fan of the show. We support him as well, everything he's done. <laughs> outstanding player, by the way. Uh, hey, War hey, Eagle. JP. War Eagle. Yeah. No, don't you say that. I can't say that? No. Go I'm Tigers, sorry. man. <laughs> they, first of all, that school is confused. They got two mascots. They don't they even do, know which one they want to be. They got a bird. They got a, <laughs> they got a tiger. I never seen so a tiger. I see the bird all the time. So Exactly. So they confused. So they ain't on the yeah, Whatever. Yeah. But anyway, my boy, my boy JP, too, he going to come. He going to come to the all. crib. Yeah, he going to come to the crib and give me a nice little workout this year as well. So. The season that I'm about to have gonna be shout out to JP, man, because I'm about no to question. go crazy. I no already question. know he got some drills set up for me. And he he getting us all 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 primed up and ready for, for the next chapter, Matt. No question. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> shout out to JP, by the way. Next question is coming from Donald J. Schrute. What's the most and uh -oh. least helpful advice you've received from a veteran when you entered the league? The most the least, helpful. The most helpful or and the least helpful. Um, the most helpful will come with film study, you know, because mm -hmm. if you want to be a guy that that plays 10 plus 10 plus years in your career, mm -hmm. you're going to lose some of your physical attributes. So you have to be able to put yourself a step ahead of your opponent. You have to be able to understand and know what they're about to do before they do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Period. Because now with me being in the league, when I first came in the league, Mac, the average age was average age was probably around 20, 29 or 30. Yep. Hell, now the average age is like 24, 23. No and getting younger so and younger. So guys are they're getting younger and younger, faster and faster, and bigger and bigger. So now with me being a year 13, I have to be able to beat those guys to the punch before they get to the punch. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for me. And that came from Adrian Wilson, man. Shout out to AP, uh, Adrian Wilson, man, because I just watched a ton of film with him. Um, I, I only played two seasons with him um, mm -hmm. before he ended up going over to Chicago Bears and the New England Patriots before he hung it up. Yep. But he was one of those guys that gave – one of the nuggets that he gave me. And the least advice? Yeah, least. I, I, man, I would say, man, I was around some great – some great vets, man. I really was. So I can't really remember any bad advice that I ever got from any guys because, like I said, I was around some good guys when I came into the league. I was around, you know, the Larry Fitzgerald, the Joey Porters, the Darnell Dockets, 
uh, the young Calais Campbell, you know, yep. had the opportunity to watch his uh, the, his uh, career flourish, you know, going into year five when I got drafted there. Um, uh, you know, I just been around so many. Rashad Johnson, a, yep. a guy, a name that many people may not know, but he was another guy who taught me how not only to practice and always had that competitive edge in practice, but he always told me that everybody's watching. Whoever's on that sideline, they're watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was important to me as well because that's something that young guys may 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 let slip by the wayside as well. Yeah. You know, you may see these scouts, you may <clears throat> see these guys on the sideline, you know, with their arm po- po- uh, posted and, and, and folded like this right here, but they watching your every move. They they watching to see how you interact with other people, how you go about your day-to-day business, how you prepare for practice. Yep. They're watching all of that. So Rashad, that's shout out to Rashad for giving me that nugget, you know, because no at the end of the day, when you step out on that grass, you always watch. You just don't know by who. I, I agree. I, I love that. And I can echo the same thing in, re, in regards to advice. Watching film, I'll go a different direction. I ha, I, I want to highlight three different things that I heard from three different coaches. Dick LeBeau used to tell us as a unit, defensively, that note at the bottom of that bottle is never good. <laughs> the fine print? <laughs> the, the front, that note that's at the bottom of that bottle is never good. <laughs> Meaning, don't drink everything in that bottle that you get to that note. <laughs> right? That's what he used to say. If it be, you know, I'm not a dragon, so it applied to me, but it made sense. He said, listen, man, don't never get to that, that. Don't never read that note at the bottom of that bottle. Because if you read that note, you've drunk everything that's in there. And that's never a good right. thing. All right? <laughs> that came from the great Dick LeBeau. Mike Tomlin used to tell us all the time, in this business, resume means nothing. Nothing. He you said that. He already, he already said that. <laughs> yes. And think about it. You look at the nature of the life, the span, and how things go in the NFL. What you done last year, two years ago, means nothing. Every year's a prove me year. Every day's a prove me day. And then yes. coming from the great Bill Cower, you guys live a fishbowl lifestyle. Remember it. Because at any given time, someone can look into your life. Mm-hmm. Man, and those are all the power. And that's a true statement. <laughs> being in the NFL, anything that you do, Someone has the ability to look into it because everything is always publicized, especially if it's not positive. Right. So those are great things that I, I heard. At least I'm like right there with you. I ain't really heard no bad advice from guys that I've been around. You know what yeah. I mean? Everybody had some nice things to say. So shout out to Donald J. Schrute for that question. Next question this is for you, Pat P. Coming from 19 times. Okay. Now that the Minnesota chapter of your career is over, what, what's your favorite or fondest memory of your time with the Vikings? Good question. 19 <laughs> times. 19 times. I got to go with the Indianapolis Colts game. Oh, and, man, y'all had my and here's man. why. Oh, my, my, my emotions were gone. Man. Hey, my emotions still up there, Mac. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> man. And here's why. Yes. It was not only because it was the greatest NFL comeback. I'm yep. telling you, Mac, I don't know what it was. But before we left that locker room, it was 33 nothing. I remember it. I'm t- I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Coach uh, Kevin when he said he'll never forget that moment a day in his life. Yeah, so you say, all right, we gotta do is score. What you said, Pat P? All we gotta do is score five times be back in the game. But Mac, here it here it is, <laughs> Mac. <laughs> Mac, here, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this. I'm listening. I'm, in, I'm, I'm in my locker. I'm on my, I'm on my stool, right? Yeah. And I'm a big manifester. Like I like I just love just talking and just manifesting, just talking about things, just putting out a life. But something came across me, bro, to where it came out of my it came out of me verbally, but I was thinking it in my head. So yeah. I'm, I'm in my I got I got I got my uh my towel over my lap. I'm chilling and I hear all the commotion in the background. It was like, man, something just came all over me, literally, Max said, all you need is five touchdowns. And I got up immediately. Because Kurt was talking. Somebody was talking. I can't remember who exactly was talking. They were talking. Yeah. And I came and interrupted everything. I think Coach was talking, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I just came and interrupt everything. I was like, man, man, we know who we are. Like, we know who we are. We know this is not our brand of football. All we need is five touchdowns. Offense, I've seen it before. You're capable, capable, of, capable of it. Yeah. Defense, we just can't let them score no more. Let's go, let's go do what we do. And Kurt yeah, broke it down. 
And Kurt broke it down, and the rest was history, man. <laughs> so he is five touchdowns. Touchdown. <laughs> and, and two halves, by the way, not a four quarters, two quarters. And, and just a yeah. half a play, you needed five touchdowns, and you, it, I got it done. Man, I'm telling you, Mac, and I wish – the uh the Minnesota Vikings put out all of my mic up because like I literally everything that that has happened do uh, uh, uh during the course of that season yep I hey. literally spoke it up you spoke up the the the, the Bills when I'll come back because y'all was down in that game as well when I told him I said hey, man we good I don't know how we're gonna win it but we're gonna win it you said it <laughs> how do, and that how was another it? moment yeah. I had my coat over. I had my coat over my over. Uh, that was another moment, Matt. Uh huh. Had my had the big coat over me. It was gray. It's rain. Uh, it, it, at the time, I think it was raining at this time because it was yeah. kind of fluctuating. It was raining, snowing. It wasn't snowing. It was raining, snowing. It wasn't snowing. But anyway, I had my coat on, and it was like third quarter, late in the game. I think I had my first pick at the time, and I'm feeling it, and just something came across me again. It was like something. Just tell your boys, man. Don't worry. Just hang in there. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. And I'll be damned. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. And you closed Every it. time. Yeah. The closer. That's what they call me. Yeah, the closer. The closer. Good answer. Good question <laughs> from 19 times. We got, what, two, two, three more, and we out of here. Next question Let's go. Uh, is for me, coming from Ty Black. Top five wide receivers Brian McFadden faced during his NFL career. Ooh, oh, Mac, oh, talk to me, Mac. Because, hey, you was, you was in the era now. I was in the air with some dogs, boy. Talk uh, to me, Matt. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. I Jimmy. knew you was going to say Jimmy. And Jimmy Smith for hell, boy. <laughs> I caught Jimmy Smith at the wrong time in my career. Rookie game, rookie year, Jacksonville. Didn't start initially. Somebody got hurt. They threw me in the fire, and I'm out there on number 82. Mm. I thought he was supposed to be old, not moving like that. <laughs> but, boy, and that's when I said I came to the sideline. I said, boy, if this is the old Jimmy Smith, I can imagine when he was in his prime. <laughs> Boy, I said Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith then is who Jamar Chase is now. Mm, that's, that's a great who, comparison. Yes, yes. Jimmy Smith. That's then an awesome comparison, bro. Is who Jamar Chase is now. Strong runners, mm -hmm. surefire catchers, guys that can run behind you at any given time if you slipping. And you, strong you, catcher too. And strong. And when I say strong, he like he. Mm. Yeah, mm. no question. And I never played against Jamar Chase, of course, but just watching him, LSU, and now Cincinnati, He's if you put number ball. eighty-two on him and give him the same helmet as Jimmy Smith, the night there's there's extremely similar. So that's who I would rock with first. Second, oh my goodness, that Randy, Man. who Randy, Randy Bread, that Randy Moss, hell. Just a fear factor. <laughs> Reggie. Man, like that man was a gliding. Reggie Wayne. That's Reggie. Three. Steve Smith. Smith. Senior. Mac. Mac, yeah. And you getting close, man. You got one more, man. You missing out about five names I, I thought you would have said by now. That Steve Smith was. <laughs> oh, Steve, Smith was? Steve, Steve Smith was? Steve Smith was? Hell. But you were in his division. I'm sure you saw this guy multiple times. But we used to play against Carolina quite a few times. I remember like 0, 06, 07 and all like that. Okay. Uh, and the last one, it's hard. Mm. And see, I would, with Chad, I didn't face off with Chad so much because Ike used to always go follow Chad. That's what That was the one I was going to say. But I'm going to say this. Terrell Owens? That was another one. He and uh, Andre Johnson. Oh, I forgot about Andre Johnson. I faced <laughs> against Andre Johnson a few times too. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to put five, man. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do five, man. Dre? Yes. Dre, yes. Dre, Dre, Dre Johnson, for me, was a smoother DK Metcalf. Yeah. Smooth. Because he never did anything. It was just yeah, yeah. always smooth. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a wasted movement. None. It wasn't wasted steps. None. And, hey, hey, Andre was a a, 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 a toe tapper too now. What? Man, and, and, I, and Pat P, I caught Dre in college. Man. <laughs> 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 I caught, that's when what, he was already. And that's, what, 
That's what hey. I'm saying. I thought he would be at least in the top five. Yeah, I, that's why I said you, I got, saw, you saw this guy multiple times. I saw him when he was that number five playing for Miami, <laughs> right? And I was just trying to implement myself in the college football, like okay, <laughs> and we playing Jet Rob a bump and run, and he <laughs> off the ball, and that and that's your man, <laughs> and that's my man, and he off the ball. So I got the time to the strong side, tight end on the line of scrimmage. He off the ball, and coach want me to stay square. So you got three yards, of, you got three yards of separation already. Well, I better, I better choose the right arm to jam. Because if yes, you sir. don't, and ain't no catching. Yes, hey, sir, and then and then Mac, you already know back then they was teaching you to play heavy to your leverage. So you already oh, beat. my goodness. <laughs> so you already beat off a of line. Because uh, he already oh, know my. where to go because you're it's, not there. <laughs> it's hot outside. We in the orange bowl. It's 120 degrees. It's a 12 high new game that back already locking up out this tight. That Boy. monkey on his back. And this is the first back. quarter. <laughs> right. And they got the sun in y'all face. Oh my goodness, the first quarter, boy, them pads ain't never felt as heavy, boy. But during them days, well, I'm gonna come oh, out every day, boy. Right. So yeah, yeah I mean, Drake. Yeah, oh no question. Them. Oh mm. man, them pads and that dry fit jersey ain't dry <laughs> fit how it is now. It felt heavy, man. Yeah, so. hey, man, y'all had the y'all had the silk jersey, the one that had the big holes in it too. Yeah, y'all silk had, pads. Y'all, had the, y'all had no dry fit. That was when it started <laughs> to sweat, and when you sweat, it became heavy. It came like a damn five towel. Five pounds heavy. Five oh. pounds heavier. And this man coming out, man, with his calf muscle stretching out, man, digging his toe into that ground. And you like, <laughs> hey, boy. they got them black cleats on with them, oh. with them high, uh, the mid whites. I already no know, question, man. man. So I already that, know, man. It's, it's hard. <laughs> hey, man, good question. It's hard for me to do tie black thing for the question. It's hard for me to do five because, like Pat said, in that era, man, you had, boy, you man, had, you some, got, you had some goons out there. And, yeah. You had goons and Hell, you even had Santana Moss. Oh, that's another one, Pat P. Oh, yeah, Pla- you, you, you didn't go against, but Placo Birds was a beast. Yeah, yeah, I ain't go, I ain't play against Plax. I never played against Plax, but Santana, that's another one. When he get off the ball and you got to press that's him, that's what I'm saying. And you talk about quick, but a strong runner, <laughs> bro. Like, like during your era, like that's when, that's when I feel like the receiver group was becoming alive. Oh, no, like question. where it wasn't like multiple names, like it wasn't just like. Two or three household names, like when Jerry, you know, when Michael Irvin, those guys were playing. Now, yeah, in the uh, mid two thousand to the to the late two thousands, that's oh. when you started seeing like it was oh. it was a, a legitimately I, seven guys. And I, and and I, and for guys that are for girls who are saying, what about Marvin Harrison? They never Marvin switched, Harrison, they, but they never switched sides. See, I always got Reggie. They because one that's thing about their one. offense. They never, I, I put Reggie in there. They never switched sides. Their offense was unique. Marvin will always line up one side. Reggie will always line up on the other side. They never switch sides. You don't see right. that in today's game. You know, most no. wide receivers flop. No. They play either side. Hey, Matt, so I always I line up would. on. I on, wish on. they would line up like that. <laughs> no, nah, they don't. That, that was just the coach, though. That was yeah, just the I coach. Wish, I wish the coach would line up like that. And then you got, man, you can, <laughs> I, I, Larry Fitzgerald. They, they I, see. I, I, just, I don't know how you can do five. And Quan Bowen. Bowen. That's yeah, what like, I'm saying. I, I, I don't know how you can do. Brandon Marshall. Yes. I, I don't know how you can do five. It's hard to do five. When yeah. you talk about when I got drafted in 05, and just from that 05 era to that like 2010 era, that 2012 era, you're talking about. That's when that's when the quarterback play and the receiver play in height. In my opinion, I feel like. Because before 2005, uh, before 2005, it was almost kind of like 21, 12 personnel run heavy mm-hmm. offense. You know, you want to play good defense, but we want to run the ball and pulls our will. Yeah. But around that 2007, Boy, Mark, thing. Boy. air rate. Well, people start throwing it. And they can run it too, though. So that's the thing. Right. They had running backs. That was the thing. That then coach team getting- had Dallas Clark, Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Peyton Manning, and Ezra and James. So what you because if you ain't careful, Edrin James gonna do numbers on you. Like what what like that's what I was about to say. Think of the Edrin James, the Willie Parkers, the uh uh <laughs> what was, was other man, but he was number 34 for the pitcher. I cannot think of his name. I see his Ron, Rashad, Ron Haynes, Veron no, Rashad Minnehaw. Oh Minnehaw, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But those that's when those scat bats, those those guys who can catch the ball out of the backfield, you can spread them out. 
that it kind of uh, 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 uncover those mismatches. Yeah, that's when that game started coming in, in, no into, in, into play. Though, though, man, that 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 era, man, wide receivers. I, it's hard. I can't name five because you can name hey, twenty that was go get us. Hey, right, Pat Pierce, on my rookie year, when um when we played the Colts in the playoffs. The game plan, Ooh. Dick LeBeau came up with a, ma- a masterful game plan, right? Hold on, they, which we, one though, Mac? Because y'all played them twice. The first time they kicked us in the mouth, Monday Night Football. Right. So you're talking they, about they the one that back. matters. So Dick LeBeau came up with a game plan. He was like, because at that time, the Colts ran a no huddle. It was a tempo, but he told us, he said, it's a fake tempo. It's not a real tempo, guys. And we we're like, what do you mean, coach? And the thing I love about Dick LeBeau, and I love this about great coaches, they would tell you something, they would tell you why. Right. Like if we're playing this coverage, you're inside because this. You're outside because of this. I love that. Give me the explanation on why I'm doing what I need to do so I know where I need to be successful and what, what the p- weak points might be. So he said, they're not running tempo. What they're doing is they're trying to get you to show your hand. So when mm-hmm. you show your hand, all Peyton does is look at your defense. He calls a counter to what you're showing him, and he's going to execute it because he knows what's your in. So Dick mm-hmm. LeBeau said, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to watch the play clock. So when the Colts come to the line of scrimmage, don't even look at the formation. We already gave you the call, but I want you guys in the second and third level to show the same shell every time. And when the play clock hits eight, roll into whatever it is I call. He don't have enough yes, time sir. to counter. So in the week of prep, getting ready for that game, playoff game, it was so unfamiliar because we never – have a coach ever told you anything like that, Pappy? Like you, you – you, you, <laughs> And Dick LeBeau yeah. was the first one to kind of do this because at that right. time, Peyton Manning was hell, right? They yeah. were kicking everybody in the mouth. So when we did it in practice, he was like, watch the play clock. We had a play clock for the defense, for, for, for the defenders. We watched the play clock roll. First quarter, we did it. Man, Joey Porter, we had on the show last week, getting all kinds of sacks. James Ferrier, we had Peyton rattled because what he saw the first time was a totally different game plan. Right. Mm-hmm. So now, but me... I'm the only rookie on the field. Everybody else is seasoned vets. When that last drive happened, when Jerome fumbled, no, it was, it was mm. in the fourth quarter. In the four, Before the fumble happened, they started to kind of get some things going. Instead of us keeping the shell, we're lining up and what we in. So mm. I'm the only rookie in the field. I said, hey, what happened to the freaking <laughs> shell? What y'all doing? Y'all rolling in the coverage. This man know I'm man to man right now, right? <laughs> You got to try said, three times. <laughs> oh, but before that, before that last drive, oh. he was coming at me. So right. I said, hey, because Peyton is a Hall of Famer. He got a Hall of Fame wide receiver, potential Hall of Fame wide receiver on a rookie corner. You know where he going. <laughs> so I see, oh, man to man, it's one-on-one drills over here. So now I'm standing on eggshells. I say, hey, what we doing? What happened to the disguise concept? This man know I'm a man to man. Them boys looked at me and said, man, you got it? I said, huh? <laughs> I got it. Y'all, y'all, okay, okay. So I said, boy, I said, this, this is what I'm in right now. But boy, you talking about, boy, I ain't hear nothing. I ain't felt nothing. I was numb. Because I said, this one-on-one drills right now. Right. It's one-on-one drills. It's one-on-one right now. And see, either I'm going to stand up, or boy, I'm going to have to catch a Greyhound back to ta- uh, back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on no Greyhound. <laughs> but <laughs> hey, but that, that, that era right there, Pat P., and you know how much man to man you play when you out there by yourself, Ooh. and you, you know, and, and, and you know, Pat P. Have you ever been to the line of scrimmage? <laughs> you, you know, it's man to man, and you look behind you, you don't see nothing. Oh man, Mac, I've been there a number of times. Ain't <laughs> up but green grass. You like, boy, I got it. Let's go, cause I ain't got nobody got behind me. Hey, Mac, gotta embrace it, baby. You gotta <laughs> embrace it, no question. Gotta embrace Either it. Either embrace man. it or can't get on that greyhound or go home. I'm trying to tell you, and, and you just gotta be built different. For, no for that, you have yeah. to be built different for that because when those moments occur, that's when you're going to find out who's built for it. No question. Because some guys going to fold, some guys going to rise to the occasion. No question. And just playing co- cornerback, bro. That's just the life of a cornerback. No doubt about it. And like I said, you may lose some, but how are you going to bounce back? Are you going to let that loss weigh you down? No. That's my question. I agree. I agree, man. Good, good question, T. Black. But I can't just name five, man. I, that uh, that take. I mean, Ty Black. I said this tough, but I gave you the yeah, best yeah. I could. Next two questions. We got two left. Pat P. Simply, Justin, 
What was it like going from playing defense, defense to returning a point on fourth down, Pat P? Man, it was unbelievable, man, because I got mad when like, you stopped doing it, but go ahead. Yeah, but yeah. like 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 Prime used to always say, man, I'm a four down corner. Like you gotta worry about me on first and th- on, on first and third, first yeah. and third. And four. And you gotta worry about me on fourth down. <laughs> so anytime that your office is on the field or whatever, you know, who's on the field. 21 ain't leaving the field. So therefore got you got a problem doing it. Yeah, you got a problem. You got problems on your hand at all times. But Mac, here's why I left. I know. Being being a returner, man. I couldn't uh, man, I, Mac, the way I used to wake up in the morning after being a rookie. And but I fought through it because it's a, it's a mentality. It's it's, yeah. it's a mindset, man. You it, ain't, ain't nobody going to feel sorry for me. You know what I mean? So it was a mindset I had to find a way to work through that, but I was like, "Hey, man, if I want to play 10 plus years, yeah, I, I, I can't be a four down guy no more. <laughs> it, just, it just can't happen. Hey, if, I'm, you, if I'm, go ahead. I know I'm saying you gave him what they needed though. When you were yeah, out there turning points, you, <laughs> your, 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 your imprint was felt. I gave him what they needed for that year and a half because I didn't do it as much as I did or where teams stopped kicking it to me in year two and I didn't do it at all in year three, and then I was pretty much emergency situational uh, returner at that point. But, man, I loved everything about it Mm -hmm. because of, like, with me playing offense in high school, me playing every position in high school, it made me understand the areas that guys needed to get to in order to capture me. Mm -hmm. So that's what, for me, that's what made punt return so easy for me because I did something very unique that most guys didn't do because they question me all the time. Like, how can I look at the ball four or five times and also understand the coverage or the guys that's coming towards me? Yeah. But what that did for me, that gave me the ability, because you see guys all the time taking devastating blows when they take they, they catch a ball, they're getting blown up. Mm-hmm. I've never t- taken one of those. Never. Yeah, because now with me understanding engaging, because if you once you understand the spin that's coming off whatever foot uh, the punter is, left foot or right uh, punter, because the spin is different, and you beat the ball to that spot, you giving yourself time to gauge where the two fastest guys can capture you mm-hmm. are on the football field, which are the gunners. So that's what. To me, I believe gave me the upper hand because I gave myself an opportunity to really understand where the coverage was and understanding where I needed to get in order to be to to make this return successful. Mm. Like for me, I was never a wiggle guy. Like I was a guy that was going to get it in and get it out. Like I was more of a power guy. Like I'm going to beat you with speed and power. Because the more I do all of this, it's giving those time, it's giving the guy, the uh, the ten, the ten guys time to get down there to get me because they're taught to not to slow down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I gotta beat them to my punch before they get there. Yeah. So with me doing all this wiggling and all that stuff, that's waste. That's wasted movement. That's wasted time, mm-hmm. and that's wasted energy. So with me doing my unique way, and my dad taught me that. When I was in high school, you know, so that's something that I won't necessarily say that I created on my own because a lot of other great returners said they always gave at least two peaks. I went to a a stretch to giving three or four peaks Mm -hmm. to make sure that I was secure because my hands were so good. I felt so comfortable with my hands to where no matter where the ball was, I can remember when I caught the one, uh, my fourth, the, the time the NFL record. If you go back and watch that punt return, bro. You can watch how many times my eyes went up because Danny Jones was a guy that was known for hang time. Mm-hmm. So I had to understand where the two guys outside were was at all time. Yeah. So if you go back and watch that clip, I, I remember what, looking up like three or four times and I caught the ball literally with my fingertips while slipping another way. Mm-hmm. So that's how much I trust my hands to give myself the ability to know what the guys are on. Or, uh, the guy, the gunners are on the outside to 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 hopefully make this return as successful as it can be. But I definitely miss it, man. But waking up on a Monday morning, <laughs> you don't miss that soreness. Nah, I don't miss that at all. 
<laughs> yeah, good response. Thank you, simply Justin, for that question. Last question is coming from Michael Allen. Can you guys name the best DB coaches in the league right now? Man, I, honestly, I don't know many DBs, DB coaches in the league. Uh, across uh-huh. the league, because as you know, the league changes changes all the time, all so the time. much. But I can give you guys who I've been around in the league who I felt that was really, really well. Well, let me let me do this before, before you do that. Let me give you a list of some of the DB coaches, and you might be surprised when you hear some of this. You you're gonna know some of these names, all right? You got John Butler with the Bills, Sam Madison, former player. Yep. The Dolphins, Marquan, Marquan Manuel, former player with the Jets, Denard Wilson uh, with the Ravens, Ray Miles, Colts, Christian Parker, Broncos, Dave Merritt, Chiefs, Jason Simmons, Raiders, Al Harris, Kyle Hello, Boys, Al. Jerome Henderson, Giants, DK McDonald, Eagles, uh, Brett Vesselmeyer, Commanders, John Hoke, Bears, he's the corner coach, uh, Brian Duker, the Lions, Ryan Downward, Downward. Packers, Jonathan Cooley, Panthers, Marcus Robertson, Saints, Patrick Tony, Cardinals, Chris. Hey. You know, you know I, Patrick yeah. Tony? I know M Rock. Okay. Chris Beak with the Rams, Daniel Bullocks with the 49ers, Ray Anderson, Seahawks, Kevin Ross with the Buccaneers. He's the corner coach. Um, Grady that's Brown, my guy. The Steelers, Tom Donatel, Chargers, nope. Steve Jackson, Falcons, Mike uh Pella Grant Greeno. Patriots, Charles Burks, Bengals, Corners, Brandon Lynch, Browns, Corners, Dino Vasso, Texans, Corners, Deshae Towns, my former teammate. You're from a coach. Jaguars, Corners, and Chris Harris, uh, the Titans. I'm going to go, I'm going Deshae Towns. Chris Harris? uh, Chris Harris? Chris Harris? That's what, you know what? Chris Harris Jr.? I don't know. I don't know. No, that's not, no, not not that Chris Harris. Yeah. I'll say, doggone, he was just playing with the Saints last year. He was. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I'm, go, know, I'm going know, to Shea Townsend. Yeah, I know. I know a couple, couple of those guys in that group. I Harris, who is a a Blanche Ely Tiger, Grady, who I had an opportunity to play with and play for uh, in college uh, at, at LSU. Kevin Ross, who mm-hmm. I always told you is one of my all time favorite, yeah, uh, defensive back coach. Uh, Durante Jones. I had an opportunity to play with him last year in Minnesota, man. He was he was one of those coaches, man. I still tell him to this day, man. Like, he reminded me so much of my pops. And here's why. Like, like my dad always knew how to push my buttons before, like right before a game. Mm-hmm. And Durante Jones did that. Literally, right before every game. Like, we'll be cool all week. And he'll send me like these little subliminal messages and stuff like that. So he was actually another guy who added fuel to the fire too, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> he was another little, uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Lighter fluid. He yeah. was a, he was another uh, another uh, source of lighter fluid to the fire as well in my last season. But he found ways to always push button. It, it, it reminded me when I was in Little League mm-hmm. with my dad. Like, literally, I can remember my dad taping me up. And he used to always say, hey, man, he talking about number, number number two on the other team. They coming to watch him. Like, oh, man. You know what I mean? Just stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I remember uh, Durante Jones, the first Giants game. This Because this is when I was, I was kind of upset that I didn't, because the year that I had, that I didn't make Pro Bowl. Yeah. It was like, man, don't give a fuck about that. I don't give a fuck about you not making Pro Bowl. What you going to do about the day? Today's Sunday. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> I, yeah. I said, I said since, you, since you poked the bear, I'm going out here and get me a goddamn pick today. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> and you I got mean, it. I went, I went out there and got me a pick. So you got it. It's things like that. that I, and Kevin Ross was another one, man. Like mm-hmm. He was a, another guy that knew. And he was an old-timer. So he had no filter. He had no understanding of the new the new uh day uh day and age of game like he yeah all he remembers the the 1980s the early 90s <laughs> his yeah. favorite thing hey. was put your fingerprints on their throat <laughs> <laughs> no boy that's a heck of a phrase right there <laughs> put your fingerprints on their throat <laughs> dang <laughs> okay hey well yeah, coach brown grady brown i hope he's listening to this because hey 
Give hey, give, and, give Pat some light if you lose it. Hey, and speaking of Grady Brown, Grady Brown was the guy, and remember I told you I learned how to watch film in college. Yep. He was a guy who literally showed me how to start watching film on my opponent. Because at the time, Grady, my sophomore year, Grady was a GA. So he oh, really so was Grady was at LSU? Yeah. So your so coach was, now that's in Pittsburgh was at LSU your sophomore year. Yes, that's what I'm so that's why we have such a great connection. So oh. and like I said, I supposed to have been here years ago, but it didn't happen. <laughs> but anywho, um he was the one literally, man. He was a GA, so he can be, I could be around him More as than much as I want because he's yep. not a coach. Yeah. So he's literally, bro, teaching me how to study. We went out and and, and, and did, you know, drills in in the uh, in the indoor. Like we watching Julio Jones in April. We watch it AJ Green in April. Mm-hmm. And we play these guys in October. Wow. So with him giving me those little nuggets and giving me those tools on how important understanding your opponent is at the college level, it gave me the upper hand when I got in the league. It wasn't like most guys coming to the league now. You know, most guys coming to the league now, young guys be like, man, how you watch film? Like, what you looking at? Like, mm-hmm. you mean to tell me why you was in college three and a half years, four years, they ain't teach you none of this? Yeah. What the hell you been doing? No so question. So being with him, he definitely, he's another coach that that I feel, that I have, you know, very, very deep endeavors to because he was the one that, you know, like I said, helped mold me who I am today and me passing all of these nuggets that I was able to capture from these coaches Pass down to the next generation and the next generation. No, that's good information. That's good information. I didn't know Grady was with you in LSU. So you guys already know each other extremely well. So that definitely should come in handy. Good questions. Great answers. Great questions. I'm sorry. Great questions. Great answers coming from our listeners and our viewers. We thank you once again for this mailbag show. Shots out to all our fans, man. Outstanding questions that myself and Pat P were able to answer. And Thank you once again for watching us, giving us your comments in our in our comment section on YouTube. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend. You guys have done a phenomenal job. We've been adding viewers left and right weekly. Continue to can, can, to push that momentum. And Pat P, so next week we want to do something special for our Uh-oh. listeners and our viewers. What we got for them, I man. think we got a we got a we got a major major guest hopefully scheduled Ooh. for next week. Hopefully. I don't like usually. Nah, it's not hopefully, but it you know things it's can locked happen. In. It's locked in. No questions. It's locked, locked in. in, man. So if if you're a fan of, if can you're a fan of, no, 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 just know they're Why great not? and they're in the Hall of Fame. Oh, th- th- you just gave him a hit. It's a lot of Hall of Famers. <laughs> it is, but you just gave him a hit. That's I did. all they need to know. It's your fault. That's all they need to know. It's a Hall of Fame. That's we gonna bring all the viewers to see who the hell we talking about. And the only way you're going to see is a tune in next week. Yes, sir. Long hair, yeah. don't care, baby. Man, no question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you once again for watching this. Coming from Pat P, myself. See you when we see you.